Hey there, and uh, welcome in everybody to kind of a stream of consciousness that I had. For those of you that follow the YouTube channel, uh, thank you very much, and thanks for watching. We're in a slow period, obviously, with uh, the coronavirus epidemic or pandemic, whatever you want to call it. And it looks like sports are starting to come back a little bit, and this is a good opportunity to maybe reset the system, uh, or if you've been doing what I've been doing lately, which is learning new and different things. Um, so if you're interested in coaching and, and learning new sports and looking for advantages and edges, then I would encourage you to go to DFSArmy.com and consider becoming a VIP member using the coupon code CHOP. It earns 20% off each month. Or for a limited time, you can use the coupon code ESPORTS and you get your first month for 20 bucks. And then from then on out, every month you stay a member after that, you get the locked in 20% off rate. So it's kind of like a half price first month and then the rest of the way is the standard VIP rate. So it's a little bit of a bonus to encourage you to get in here, test some of the discussions, test the tools. If you like eSports, we're really tearing it up lately. Uh, if you like uh, other sports, we're waiting for those to come back online. But one thing that we've branched out into the past couple of months, uh, poker, we've done a lot of poker talk. Um, one of the uh, gurus in poker and I went round and round today. Hopefully people read that back. Uh, about a specific scenario where uh, he believed one way, I believed the other, and we arrived at the same conclusion kind of at the end, but you can see maybe my uh, teaching style or maybe my knowledge of the game of poker. Um, I'm not a pro, but I'm not a fish, and uh, I teach people beginning poker all the time through conversation and, and whatnot, and uh, e even this guy is more of a tournament player. He plays cash, but he's a tournament player. Uh, as well as been lately focused on tournaments and we were able to kind of come to some agreements with a lot of deeper level talk um, kind of getting beyond even the intermediate level of uh, poker strategy so uh, that's definitely there I've been learning horse racing horse racing is uh, something I've always kind of enjoyed I, I really like the greyhounds but horse racing is something I've really kind of enjoyed and, and this is a, just kind of a new thing to do while sports are slow because I don't do video games I don't do esports we have gurus set up for that uh, we're going to have soccer back soon, PGA back soon, MMA it looks like on uh, like May the 9th or something like that. So we're going to get some stuff back here, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. Baseball hopefully happens this year, hockey picks back up, etc. But what the horse racing research, I mean, when I find something new, I absolutely gorge on it. It's my research style. I learn and then I try to pass it along to people and teach. And what I'm learning through the horse racing research is that it's it's again it's setting a process and I think that a lot of people go into DFS the same way I know I probably did but it's been so long that I forgot how I got started other than you know through football and reading the DFS Army blog or what has become DFS Army and getting to be friends with uh, the owner of the site and you know just kind of growing inside the the field or the industry from there um, but Horse racing has sort of reset the system, and what I'm what I'm learning is what I do in the very very beginning is probably what you do when you're learning something new. Uh, at least hopefully it's what you do. You're looking for a shortcut. You're looking for cheat sheets. We have those. You're looking for um, insider tips. We have those. You're looking for entry level strategy articles. We have those. You're looking for simplification of what looks like an overwhelming and, and um, kind of daunting process. And we have all of that stuff in our tools and in our sports and in all of the content that we provide at DFSArmy.com. So it's there for you, okay? And we're always working to improve it and make it better. But if you're brand new and beginning to learn eSports or soccer or whatever it is, you're going to be looking for quick-hitting strategy probably that gets you. But what you're going to realize is the more you start to learn the basics of the sport, you're going to learn that you need to learn even more or you're you know you you're going to start learning what you don't know and how important it becomes and that's where the gurus and the coaching come in very very handy is you're going to be discussing things with them uh, in the horse racing room I've been discussing things with Ryan and Trey um, and yeah I come on strong and I come on you know uh, confident or e even a little bit arrogant or whatever at times I'm really not I'm, I'm a total noob when it comes to horse racing but I do my research, I have opinions that are backed up by numbers and research, and this is the best way. Don't come in saying, who should I pick, this guy or that guy? That's incredibly lazy. 
Come in with some fire. Come in with some answers. Come in with wanting the questions to help me break a tie between these couple of plays. And the only way you can get there is to do a bunch of your own research behind the scenes on your own. And if you truly enjoy the hobby, you're going to want to do that research. I'm reading about speed, I'm reading about pace, I'm reading about form, I'm reading about constructing tickets, I'm reading about all sorts of handicapping, horse racing things that are really cutting into my sleep or whatever else, but it's because I'm enjoying what I'm doing and it, it, it's fun when it's like a new relationship. It's, it's fun and it's hot in the beginning, but the bottom line is I'm starting to finally see after a couple of weeks of this and a bunch of notebooks that I've written notes down everything, I'm starting to finally see that handicapping isn't about just playing the favorites, just playing the money line favorite, morning line favorites. Um, it's not just about playing the chalk. In fact, the chalk often loses. And, I mean, well, it doesn't often lose. It wins more often than anything else, but it still loses the majority of the time. The, the Kind of predicting, two things are coming out. Predicting where the public's going to go and then getting away from that sounds like a contrarian in DFS, does it not? Well, the same thing happens in horse racing. Trying to predict where the public goes and then getting off of it for leverage is important in horse racing. But also, trying to find value. Trying to find your price. You think the horse could win 20% of the time? Well, you better be getting better than 5 to 1 odds on that horse or you're not going to profit. If you don't think you can only win 20% of the time and you pay 3 to 1, then you're only going to win a third of the time. Well, you're not going to get paid but 6 bucks when you should be getting paid about 10 bucks. So your job is to always be looking for value as well. And you find that value oftentimes in areas where the public will not be looking because they're already looking in you know, the similar areas. I'm sorry, I got a warning on my television going off here. I'll have to go check that in a minute. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go check it right now, and I'll be right back. All right, so that wasn't uh, for me. We may hear some beeping in the background, but uh, springtime storms, what are you going to do? Um, anywho, the concept of value runs in DFS as well. We're always looking for a player that can produce like a $30 player that we're getting for 20 bucks or whatever the case may be when it comes to your salary. Well, horse racing is the same. But as I'm digging in, I'm finding that I need to – Get those bullet points, get that easy, quick, basic, fundamental understanding of the sport first. And then once I find that, I can start moving to advanced strategies. I can start moving to uh, discussions with people who have been there and done that. And what I'm finding as I read is a lot of the things that the answers that I'm getting to my questions are being echoed in the articles that I'm finding in uh, in my own research. I, I'm seeing where these gurus are getting their principles, whereas before I heard about them the first time, they make no sense. Um, I, I don't understand really what they're saying. And instead of wear the guy out and go back and forth and back and forth and have him spell it out for me, I go to Google or I go somewhere else and I start learning as much as I can. When I start seeing that echo, that's what's going to start uh, resonating with me. And, oh, that's what he meant. Oh, that's what he meant. Oh, that's what he meant. And now I'm really starting to pick up some speed. And now I can start talking about intermediate and advanced strategies because I've got the basics kind of down. And that drives my conversation with the guy even deeper to where maybe eventually we get kind of on the same level where we're talking about things like underneath plays and, and uh, horse racing and um, how do you see this particular race unfold? Well, that seems to be something that it took a while for me to get there when it comes to horse racing is understanding what you're trying to do with pace numbers is predict the the race unfolding and who's going to be in front. And are they going to tire each other out? Or is there going to be one horse that just runs wire to wire or what? And, and, and how am I going to play that? And then if it plays out this way, how does that benefit, you know, X, Y, Z horse. And if it plays out another way, how does that benefit other horses? And then which ones are more likely to pull out the win and second, third, whatever, and start filling in which long shots or whatever might have uh, opportunities to fill in the other sides of more exotic tickets for higher returns on investment. And that strategy, if that went over your head, is no big deal. But that strategy is exactly what you're trying to construct when you play uh, baseball, basketball, football. How football especially? How is this game supposed to go? What is Vegas telling me? What are some alternate scenarios? Because everybody's going to see that the over/unders are 54, and they're going to love the game. It's in a dome. It's a shootout. It's Drew Brees and 
you know, I don't know, Jameis Winston or whatever, that are going to go back and forth and try and outscore each other. Well, that's the most likely scenario, and that's what everybody's going to do. However, if you look at alternate scenarios, then you can start to pick up on, well, what if the first – uh, possession results in a touchdown run back of the kickoff and all of a sudden Drew Brees drives down the field and goes up two scores on Tampa. Well, Tampa's going to be forced to throw, but Drew Brees is going to lean on the run. You know, and how does that say? Well, that might go to a Jameis Winston, Mike Evans stack last year. I know they got Brady and Gronk now, but last year a, a Jameis uh, Winston, Mike Evans type stack and run it back with an Alvin Kamara or something like that. Those are the kinds of scenarios that generate leverage in tournaments because it's not what everybody else is doing. Everybody is so predicting in horse racing, predicting where uh, the public is going to bet a favorite down and wreck his price is a way that you can then pivot off of that and say, well, what if the horse, what if it plays out a different way? Is there another scenario that I can then bet? And then look at that. Well, what horse benefits? Oh, it's this one at eight to one. Holy crap. That'd be a great price. This court, this horse actually has better than a 12% chance to win the race. So I should be at eight to one. I'm getting a great price because even though it's not going to happen most of the time, when it does happen, it's going to pay me as if it should have happened even less often. And that's all contrarianism is. That's all fading the chalk is. That's all leverage is. It's all value is. It's all of these same DFS concepts that we teach at DFS Army. And that's why we're so good. That's why our members are on leaderboards. That's why we're teaching people how to become better at these sports. We're not just reporting the sport and just covering the sport, but we're teaching you how to look at the game within the game and get better yourself. And it comes from people, and I don't want to toot my own horn, but it comes from people like me that are willing to do that and then share and talk to you and explain to you and teach you what we've learned, what we've picked up from when we started out and what has worked for us and what has not worked for us. And we can steer you in a direction that works possibly for you. And we can shorten your growth curve and make you a more competitive player faster than if you did this on your own. And it only works with the discussion with the coaching. So I'm sorry to have this little stream of consciousness, but I was sitting there reading tonight a couple of other articles and it started kind of coming together for me where I said, oh my God, I've got to get this out. I've got to share this with people. I've got to explain to people that whether it's horse racing or poker or esports or basketball or baseball or football or whatever, that they're all the damn same. They're all the same. The process from A to Z is the flipping same. But the beauty is I've got guys that can teach me the stock market. I've got guys that can teach me um, the health industry. I've got guys that can teach me dieting. I've got guys that can teach me video games. I've got guys that can teach me, you know, horse racing. I've got guys that can teach me social media marketing. I've got guys that can teach me anything and everything because we've assembled a couple of thousand, several thousand members that all talk and all share and all want, have a common interest, which is daily fantasy sports. But through that comes friendships and comes community and comes fellowship, where we then help each other by passing along information that we know that other people might not. And it becomes very easy. If I had a, a car issue, I could troubleshoot it in one of our forums because somewhere in there is an auto mechanic that'll step up and help me because I've helped him learn how to play DFS PGA or something crazy like that. That's what our community is. That's why everybody needs to become a part of it. There is no other community. I don't care if they say they give you Discord or they say that they have forums or they say that they have this, that, or the other. No other community is as heavily invested in community as DFS Army. No other community is going to teach you, talk to you, spend the time with you, and be as accessible as our gurus and our coaches are. It just doesn't exist. I've been around the block. I've seen it. I've seen this company go from the ground up. And why? It's because it's unique. It is often attempted to be, I guess, copied or whatever, but it cannot ever be copied because it's unique to us. And it's what we will always do. It's what we will always be. And I hope that you want to become a part of it. If you do, again, run down to the comments section, investigate us, dfsarmy.com. Run down, I mean, shoot, my God, you can probably see my screen here and see all of my tabs open right now that are talking about horse racing and stuff. But understand that if you're always learning and you're always growing and you're always getting better at what it is that you do, you're always improving at something and you're always learning something new to relate back to what it is that you enjoy doing. And so if you can't, you know, go to work or you can't go outside right now, you can certainly learn something new that can put you in a better position 
three months from now, six months from now, something like that. And we can teach you how to do it. So in the comments section, dfsarmy.com, coupon code CHOP, C-H-O-P, or if you want that little special half off the first month kind of situation where it's 20 bucks, uh, use the code eSports, and I'll put it down there in the comment section for you too. Hopefully I see you on the inside because I really can't express enough how important learning daily fantasy sports from the beginning is, Not, but, but then learning from the point of growing from that point forward, not just wanting the handouts, not just wanting the bullet points. Starting there, yes, but never finishing there. Don't be lazy. You owe yourself better than that. You owe yourself the opportunity to truly become an intermediate or an expert at the sports that you like to follow and that you like to play and give yourself the best competitive advantage possible to possibly earn a little bit of money. Maybe you heard the thunder in the background, but I'm going to let you go. I'm going to get out of here and I will uh, talk to you guys hopefully really soon when we start talking a little bit more about uh, sports and whatnot uh, coming back online. So take care and we'll talk to you soon.